What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, my name's Jeff. Now this is a channel where I have my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Kilcarran 12 year old. Stick around. So we're heading over to Campbelltown today. We've got our Kill Karen with us. Uh, I think this is actually the second review I've done of a Kill Karen. I recently did a review of the Heavily Peated Batch 3. Uh, that one wasn't so much to my liking, so let's hope we've got some better luck today. Of course, we've got the 12 year old with us here. This one, it's only been up for a few years now, but already considered something of a classic. Part of that respect might have something to do with its association with Springbank. Uh, Springbank is one of, if not the most respected brand or distillery within the whiskey community. Now our Kilcarran here is made at a distillery called Glen Gyle, and both Glen Gyle and Springbank fall under the same ownership. Not only that, uh, Glen Gyle, like Springbank, is also a Campbelltown malt, and generally speaking, Campbelltown malts are always well received by the whiskey world. Or it might just be that regardless of what distillery this is associated with, the whiskey we've got here is genuinely delicious and deserves all the praise it gets based on its own merits. We're going to find out shortly. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to talk about Glen Gyle a little bit. It is both a very old and very new distillery. Now, I'm not usually one to do deep dives into the history of a distillery on my channel. There's other YouTubers out there who do it much better than I could. Uh, so I'll just touch on it briefly. So Glen Gyle was around a very long time ago, and then for 75 years, it wasn't. Um, it was mothballed, shut down, whatever. It got bought out in 2000, and then they spent the next few years refurbishing it, modernizing it, and then they started distilling in 2004. Of course, nowadays, 17 years later, the distillery has more age stock on their hands, and they're starting to come out with some older expressions. Most recently, we've seen a 16-year-old. But we're not here to talk about that one, we're here to talk about the 12 year old. So this one first came out in 2016 and it's been a staple from them ever since. Apparently this was matured in 70% bourbon barrels and 30% sherry barrels, which actually seems like a lot of sherry. Um, I've had a few bottles of this in the past. It's always come across as a much more bourbon forward whiskey. Um, you do get little hints of sherry in here, but definitely a background player. Anyway, it's been about two years since I last had a bottle of Kilcarran 12, and as they are a younger distillery, we might still be seeing some evolution from them. They don't have the same stock to pull from as some of their more established counterparts to try and maintain that house style. So why don't we see if this whiskey is as I remember it, why don't we hop into our review here, and in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Anyone who knows Kilcarran knows that we can expect a natural presentation here. This one's no different. Our ABV comes in at 46%. Of course, it's not gel filtered, and of course, it's naturally colored, as always. So we have a beautiful natural color here, and uh, label's okay. It's not bad. It's not great. It might be a little bit boring, but I would just call it simple. It definitely screams craft, and tell you what, the whiskey itself is craft, so it follows. We've got some good information, non-chill filtered, no coloring added, age statement down here. What else can we ask for? Um, I think, you know, it gets a bit of esteem points for keeping it that simple. A lot of the purists out there can say, we don't need the pomp, the colors, the flash. Uh, keep your label simple. We only care about the whiskey. And, you know, part of me kind of respects that. So presentation score, I'll tell you what, we'll give it maybe three out of five. Looks good on the shelf. Let's try our nose. Okay, so a little bit of sharp ruggedness here, but that's to be expected from Campbelltown. We have ash, we have anise, we have fruit pudding, peanut brittle, some old spice cologne, um, we get some barley, some orange peel, and some salt. Good complexity here. Let's try our palette. Okay, slightly oily, not very, but a little bit oily. It's both sour and savory at the same time. Definitely spirity. Um, we're getting vanilla, honey, oats. We're getting some soot, some cloves, some nuts, some charred meat, and some lemon lollipops. Let's try our finish. Hmm. Okay. Uh, roasted coffee beans, earth, minerals, vanilla, ginger ale, milk chocolate, lemon candy, damp oak, salt, white pepper, 
and some indistinctive herbal notes. Uh, length would be medium to long. So this is the opposite of a cask driven whiskey and to be fair, I think that's probably what a lot of people find refreshing about it. Now, I do enjoy a good cast driven whiskey. Of course, if the whiskey's good, if they choose the right casts, I'm all for it. But it's rare in today's market that we'll find an aged, spirit driven whiskey, and that's what we've got here. Of course, after 12 years, we're not dealing with new make spirit anymore. The casts have ironed out some of those rougher edges, but not all of them. It's still a little bit brash, a little bit rugged, a little bit unpretty. Uh, now, of course, that's kind of what Campbelltown malts are known for, and it definitely does suit the whiskey here. But yeah, it's cool to have a whiskey where the casks are the supporting players. Makes it a little bit more raw, more honest in some ways. Um, but I should stress that a big reason that I enjoy this one is because it is age stated and it is 12 years old. If it was much younger, I'm sure I would get a lot less out of it. For those of you who have seen my review of the Heavily Peated Batch 3, you'll know that I didn't love that one. It was young, it was sharp, it was harsh. Luckily this one is older, it's less harsh, it's less sharp but it still does have a bit of an edge to it. Luckily, the spirit has rested enough. Uh, we get some more interesting flavors here and some more nuance. So I do like this one. I think my score is gonna be an 85 here. I do like it, but it's not a favorite. And despite being charmed by its slightly rougher side, uh, it's not a style of whiskey that I would come back to too often. This is definitely a once in a while dram for me. Now, feel free to unsubscribe when I say this, but honestly, Campbelltown whiskeys are not favorites of mine. I do like them. They have some wonderful flavors. I do appreciate the craft, production, and presentation. All of that works, but the way the style hits, it's the kind of whiskey that I'll come back to once in a while. I can't drink them too consistently, uh, and I'll even take it a step further. Brands like Springbank or Glengyle or Glen Scotia, uh, I like them. I think all of them are very solid, but they're not my favorite distilleries. They're not even in my top five. This is blasphemy! This is madness! But undeniably the quality is good and of course the score represents my personal taste. Now I'll tell you what, if you're a bigger fan of Campbelltown malts than I am, and I'm sure you are, then you're gonna find a lot to love in here. Now if you're looking for that famous Campbelltown funk, you're probably better off sticking with Springbank for that. This one is gonna give you salt, it's gonna give you peat, and you have that unapologetically rugged character. So I think this is a fun whiskey, good flavors in here, one worth checking out. I think we've got some decent value here. This one comes in at an entry level price tag, but I should say entry level price tag for Campbelltown. Now where I live, Campbelltown is gonna be more expensive than most other regions. Uh, this one is gonna be a few dollars pounds, less than the Springbank 10. If I had to choose between this and the Springbank, I'd probably pick the Springbank, but just by a hair. But yeah, I think the price tag here is appropriate. We've got something here that is undeniably craft. And if you're a fan of Campbelltown flavors in general, this one is gonna suit you just fine. We've got a solid whiskey at a reasonable price. Okay, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now, I do wanna hear from you. Have you tried Kilcarran 12? What were your thoughts on it? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you wanna see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.